first stormy seas. I don't remember it being that bad before we left. The gate is opening. Disgrace. The gods will punish you for this. Pick up the sword. Pick it up. Fight the darkness. Fight it. Who is speaking to her? Get up. I thought it was the darkness. Get up. I guess it's not. Get up and fight. Oh, what the fuck? Stormy seas and lost souls. She's dreamt of this before. They say dreams are visions of our memories, thoughts, and fears, as seen by our inner eye. But what if each one of us is always dreaming, even when awake, and we only see what our inner eye creates for us? Is this what hell is? world shaped by Senua's nightmares. Maybe that's why people feared seeing the world through her eyes. Because if you believe that Senua's reality is twisted, you must accept that yours might be too. You fail the gods. You're pathetic. Rotten. Cursed. What were you thinking? Did you really think you could win? How stupid can you be? Everyone hates her. She's a curse. The shadow hates Look at you. A warrior. Worthless. Weak. Pathetic. Go on. Feel sorry for yourself. Because there is no one left to do that for you. Take it. If you're too much of a coward to fight, then end the suffering. Broken and lost. Just Do like your sword. Do. Come on. There. What the fuck? Why go on? When you give everything and face that which torments you, only to find that it is worse than you could have imagined. Why go on? Is it really so weak to ask this? Or are we just so afraid of the honest answer that we do not dare pose the question? Sometimes the answer lies in a memory, a feeling, a song. It's not real. It's true. It has to be real. This did it. She can't can give up. Did it. Take it. It's not like this. It's not real. It can't. It's not real. It's your fault. It's a trick. Don't trust it. Maybe you're already dead. Who are you? Do you still believe in yourself?
All right, that was, uh... Yeah, that was pretty crazy. Holy crap. I guess it's low tide. I guess that's what, the, that's what this is. Oh my god. It's, what the hell? There it is. Your imagination. It's dead. He's gone. You were so slow. How could you keep going? How could you keep going? Ignore the pain. I told you it was the trick. I told you. I don't know why I'm cheering her on. There's no way that this is the hell that this is the end of the game, so we both know that she makes it somehow. Before she first met him, she was not in a good place. Just a teenager, but not like the others. Barely functioning, she rarely left the house. Her father, Zinbal, made sure of that. Only occasionally did she venture out on her own. Errands out in the Orkney Plains. That was her world. Like this one. Barren and lonely. Entire time, she's pretty much been her own worst enemy. There he was, the lone figure of a boy. I saw him play under the shade of a tree. She remembers the first time she saw him. To her young eyes, he moved as if dancing. And the world danced with him. The gloom. First time in years, she felt a ray of hope. The Northmen tell of a great hero. His name is Sigmund. Looks like I've missed a His couple. His father's of hall was built around a great tree, and one day, Odin comes and thrusts a sword into the tree, a gift to whomever can release it. Many try, but the sword only comes out at Sigmund's touch. His brother in law, King Sigir, wants it, but Sigmund refuses it. So King Sigir plots revenge. He invites Sigmund and his brothers to a feast, but when they arrive, they are met with an army, not a warm welcome. King Sigir captures Sigmund and his brothers, steals his coveted sword, and readies them for execution. Sigmund and his brothers seem certain. But the king's wife is Sigmund's sister, and she begs for mercy and implores the king to chain them up instead. He agrees. Not for mercy, though, but because he plans an even more cruel and lingering death. Chained to a tree in the forest that night, a she wolf comes and devours one of Sigmund's brothers. She returns, ravenous, night after night until only Sigmund is left. The next day, Sigmund's sister sends a servant with honey to smear on Sigmund's face. But to what end? Well, that night, 
when the she-wolf appears again, you'll never guess what happens. Damn it, I kinda wanted to hear the wolves. I kinda wanna hear the rest of it. It's so sweet. Whoa. I think I got a bit of a lag spike there for a second. something to do with the train. God, the, the freaking, like, the audio in this game is so good. Like, legit, when I got that lag spike, I thought it was because it was about to rain. I thought I was getting a thunderstorm here at my home. Nope, it's just the game. I want to find the next stone because I want to hear what I want to hear the rest of that story. I noticed that ship out there. That's the sheep. He bites the wolf's tongue. The she-wolf pulls away, but Sigmund holds on. The chains break, and he is free. After his escape, Sigmund lives like us, hidden in the forest. His enemy, King Sigir, believing him dead, as his sister plots revenge. And for vengeance to succeed, even the great Sigmund needs help. So she sends her sons to him. But their blood is weak and corrupted, and they're put to death by Sigmund. So his sister hatches a new plan, one that is cold of heart and pure of blood. That's it. God damn it. <laughs> oh, more. A rump, I say. A rump, I say. sister trades shapes with a sorceress and in disguise she lies with her own brother 
She gives birth to a son named Sinfjotli. After a time, she sends him to the forest to Sigmund. He tests the boy and finds him strong and fearless. And so they go to take their vengeance on King Sigir. Luck is on their side. They're captured, and Sigir has them buried alive. Jesus. That guy really just wants them dead, but he wants them to suffer. No, it's a trick. It's an illusion. It's not real. <laughs> Do you really think it's real? You want to believe it's real, but it's a trick. <laughs> oh. Where are you going? Where is she going? What is she following? You can't even fight. It's just deception. How does he so effortlessly cope with the world and bliss? Only she could do the same. See the world through eyes anew. And dance with it. Just like he does. What's your name? Senua. I haven't seen you before. I'm not... I don't leave home much. Oh. Zeno's daughter. I have to go. Wait! Who taught you to fight like that? No one. <laughs> no one? Well... I... I watched you. And... You... Learned all of that from watching me. <laughs> you should become a warrior, you know. Me? I'm Dilly. I'm here for the warrior trials. Just come and watch. And bring your sword. You can't put it into words. That moment when you look into the eyes of the one who's supposed to reassure you. Make you feel safe. It only takes an instant. Fear swallows you before you have a chance to make sense of it. And darkness becomes a part of who you are. But her will changed the day the Northmen took him from her. So no one knows that there's no going back to how things were. That there's nothing to go back to at all. Stay still, stay quiet, hide, don't tell them. Their gods can see into your mind. They will use this power to destroy you. They won't stop me. I can still feel him. Whatever's left of him, they will never let him go. I'm not gonna let him rot here! You're the one rotting here. Leave me alone. You will die here. No! And all your suffering will have been for nothing! Shut up! That's gotta be there for a reason. Alright, we'll figure that out here in a minute. Let's go get this one. I'm, I am intrigued by the story of Sigmund. As Sigmund and Sinfjotli are being buried alive, 
Sigmund's sister throws an armful of straw into the grave mound. Hidden in the straw is Sigmund's sword, the gift of Odin. They cut their way out of the grave mound and set fire to Sigir's hall. The king burns to death. Sigmund calls to his sister to come out so that she may live and be honored. She does come out, but only to tell him the truth. But she had slept with him, her brother, to beget a strong avenger. I am not fit to live, she says, and walks back into the fire. Strike vengeance from your heart, Senua, as there is always a heavy price to pay. Damn. Okay. There's another one right there. And here is the end of Sigmund's story. He was a fierce and great warrior who fought many battles. But one day, an old man came onto the battlefield. Although shadowed by a hood, Sigmund saw that he only had one eye. The man raised his spear, and Sigmund struck at it with his sword, but the sword shattered into pieces. Sigmund then knew that this was Odin, and thus that victory could not be his. He bowed his head and accepted his end. Dying, he tells his wife that she is with child, and that her son will one day make a great weapon out of the fragments of his sword. The sword named Gram. Huh. I am I, really, like, annoyed that I don't know more about Norse mythology. I know a decent amount of Greek and a little bit of Roman, but I don't know almost anything of Norse. I feel like if I knew more about Norse mythology, I wonder if I did. No, I don't. I wonder if I knew more about Norse mythology, if I would understand more of these stories. I knew those things had a purpose. 